What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we are going to make a video about the pros and cons of living in Tucson, Arizona. So I've got my dog, Larry Berto, over here, and I've got my cat over here, Mykonos, and they are, uh, I guess they're going to do whatever they do during this live feed, hopefully not act up too much. But anyway, so I wanted to make this video because it's coming as popular demand. Some people have been requesting more videos about Tucson. And uh, as you know, I went down there not too long ago. I made a virtual tour, which you can also watch on this channel. Just search the channel Tucson, Arizona virtual tour and you'll see it. And uh, so what's up, Daniel Williams and Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson says, hey, I live in Tucson. So, Mark, if you can, during the, the uh, live stream, please give us information about Tucson as I go, uh, you know, sharing insights. So. Here we go. We're going to talk about just comparing Phoenix and Tucson real quick. So in terms of crime, that's where people say you really feel it in Tucson. Tucson, uh, in terms of violent crime, Phoenix and Tucson are pretty comparable, but property crime is actually higher in Tucson than it is in Phoenix by a long shot. And they actually say that South Tucson is not a very good place to be uh, really <coughs> uh, for you know, I'm not saying it's the most dangerous place in America, but it's, uh, you know, it's got its reputation. So in terms of the pros, because that's what everyone wants to hear, what are the good things about living in Tucson? So the high desert, Tucson being at 2,000 to 3,000 uh, feet in elevation compared to Phoenix being at 1,100 uh, feet in elevation. Uh, it's got higher mountains and it's got lusher desert. And I consider the pros to be in Tucson the green, lush mountains, not just Oro Valley, not just the Catalina foothills, but just being up at the foot of the Catalina mountains and all that is, is quite nice. They have this World National Forest around there. And uh, I consider that to be one of the biggest pros. You're going to get wildlife out there. And uh, I like wildlife and mountain lions, bobcats. You're going to see those kind of things, especially if you live rural in Tucson. You can get that in Phoenix. You could get that around Scottsdale but it's really beautiful uh, Sonoran Desert in Tucson. So that's one of my number one things. Uh, let's see, some other things that you might wanna consider about Tucson, if you're big on pictures and you like beautiful sunsets, Tucson has beautiful sunsets. Obviously we get some really nice sunsets up here in Phoenix metro area, but the sunsets are gonna really stand out down there. Now, another thing that we have also in Phoenix, but we're, I'm going to try and disassociate Phoenix from this and just really focus on Tucson, the weather. The weather is probably better in Tucson than it is in Phoenix, okay? I mean, when it's 105 in Phoenix, it might be 101 over in Tucson. So you're going to be a little bit cooler because it's at a higher elevation. And, you know, you get all those uh, cloudy blue skies, um, lots and lots of sunshine in Tucson, lots and lots of it. Also, the air quality is considered pretty clean in Tucson compared to uh, Phoenix. Um, and in fact, it ranked number one uh, for the cleanest metropolitan areas in the country for 24 hour particulate uh, pollution, according to the American Lung Association in 2013. We just made a video last two days ago, the last live stream about the pollution in Phoenix Metro. Well, Tucson doesn't have that, okay? And so if you're an outdoors type of person, you like to hike, you like to get out in the nature, some of the places that you're going to be able to go around to in Tucson, Sabino Canyon, and some of these other hikes up on Mount Lemmon, and then you go west, there's some beautiful hikes around there, and there's a lot to see and do, and I consider that to be another pro. Thank you to the five people who crushed up the likes, and we have 20 people watching, and let's see, Mark Johnson, he's chiming in here, he said... Uh, it's slower paced than Phoenix. If you don't want a crowded big city, crime is a downfall, but that's everywhere. The South side is bad for, for food is good on the South side. Oh, food is good on the South side. So even though it's not so safe, he's saying on the South side, that's where the better food is. Another thing that you might find interesting is uh, Tucson was actually nominated by UNESCO. So the UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, for food, for uh, gastronomy. Uh, I think it's not, I don't think it's necessarily because of Mexican food, but there's some sort of specific dish that comes from Tucson that uh, put Tucson on the map for the UNESCO World Heritage Site for gastronomy. Gastronomy being food. <laughs> food is life. Food is culture, right? Uh, that's, that's another thing. So 
Now, in terms of some cons, and we'll get back into more in pro, pros and cons, but some of the things that people don't really like about Tucson, they say it's inefficient getting around. There's lots of potholes. It's, uh, it's too small of a city, uh, so they don't have freeway systems that actually work. I mean, they have one freeway. It's I-10. It just goes north to south, and then you've got these other roads. And people, you know, they, they like to get around. You know, maybe they live in uh, Oro Valley and they work over in, I don't know, uh, some sort of part over in south southeast Tucson, uh, Davis Mountain, I don't know. But, it, you know, it's a little bit slower getting around because you have to take surface streets. Well, if you don't like driving on freeways, it's a great place to live. I'm not a big fan of freeways, so I might that, that might not be a con for me. I mean, it's a real small thing. But uh, another thing that people complain about uh, with Tucson is it's boring, they think. Even though there's Sabino Canyon, there's Mount Lemon, there's all these different areas around, people still – after about a year or so, they kind of say, okay, what is there to do in Tucson? And, and Tucson kind of comes up as a boring place. If uh, there's a lot of, you know, they don't have a pro sports team. Uh, they do have university of Arizona Wildcats who I personally think this team in 2019, the Arizona Wildcats basketball team, I think they're going to be a top four, uh, final four team. But, um, because there's, you know, you, you got the Suns, the coyotes, the Cardinals and, the and the um, Diamondbacks up here in Phoenix, nothing down in Tucson yet. They do. They used to do some spring training down there. Uh, you know, every March, Arizona gets the uh, Cactus League. About half the teams come to Arizona. Half the teams go to the Grapefruit League to play baseball for spring because we get great weather with Florida. Um, but I think Tucson still – does Tucson still do Grapefruit or uh, Cactus League? I don't know. I'd have to double check on that. All right, but let's see. So um, – Mr. Cyclone says it is difficult to get from north to south and east to west. Yeah, because of the lack of, uh, you know, freeway systems, really. Uh, Andy Poncia, he says, the new mayor is seriously talking about fixing roads. Okay, so there's this discussion about, you know, building building these building these roads up to handle the amount of uh, influx of Californians and people who've been moving to Tucson. Uh, but they do have a light rail. So to their credit, they do have a light rail that does work and it takes people around the town. Now, when you go to downtown Tucson, if you watch my virtual tour, it's really sleepy. I mean, super sleepy. They say, uh, I, I don't know the exact uh, cross streets off the top of my head, but I can find them. There's uh, there's an area, I think it's 6th Street, 6th Avenue. In, uh, and, and they say that's a good place to go out for, for drinks and stuff. But from my experience... University is where you want to go if you want to go have a good time. Uh, maybe, Mark, you can uh, chime in and, and share your thoughts on where the best places are to go out and have a good time. But it seemed like around the university was probably the best place. There is uh, – there's it's like 6th Street and um, – I'm sorry, 6th Avenue and – let's see here. Well, we'll have to wait for someone who's a local to, to give us that information. But I can't remember, I can't remember exactly. I, I want to say it's 6th Avenue. And is it Broadway? Um, either way, that's basically where you go out, you know. But downtown Tucson is really sleepy. Anyway, so David Wilker, I didn't know that Mark, I don't pay attention to soccer much anymore. Okay, so that's what David Wilker says. He says the light rail is nice, but it's in need of expansion. Yes, it is in need of expansion. And it would be great if Phoenix and Tucson would coordinate to build that high-speed rail which would pair nicely with a light rail. Anyway, rant over on that, right? So we've got some more comments coming in. And uh, yeah, so when there's more snowbirds. Now, another thing that's come up is Tucson is like a retiree's haven. So people go there to retire in Tucson. And because of that, it slows down the nightlife, which is really funny because you do have a University of Arizona, the second largest, or I think it's the largest university in Arizona now. It's between Tempe and, you know, Tucson, right? Which one's going to have the biggest uh, university? But for the most part, uh, the retirees, keep to, they like to keep Tucson sleepy. And that's no joke. So you go up into Catalina Foothills, it's rural, it's beautiful, and they like it that way. And they don't want to change it. And so they 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 get, they you know, they just don't like the, the progress. They're not, Tucson, Governor Doug Ducey did say that Tucson was one of the cities that was, on the radar to be expanding into technology and to be getting into the, you know, a Silicon Valley of Arizona kind of environment. But the locals in Tucson are fighting that tooth and nail because they don't want that kind of, uh, 
They don't want that kind of notoriety. They don't want to really grow too much. There's some people in Tucson who would love that, but a lot of the old timers out there and the retirees, they don't want Tucson to grow like that. They like the old Pueblo to stay kind of sleepy. And for some, that's a con. Uh, so there you go. Um, and in the summer, even though it's not as hot as Phoenix, it does get hot. I mean, there's people who say that from June to uh, August, June, July, and August, you're going to be inside for the most part during the daytime. It is that hot. And, you know, you, you have to wait until the sun goes down or until the monsoon comes to finally go out and run your errands because it does get that hot. But if you can handle those three months, you'll be good in Tucson. Uh, we've already talked on the crime a little bit, but T Tucson is one of the more dangerous cities in the state. And actually, they did rank uh, South Tucson as probably the least favorable place to live in all of Arizona. So it, it does have a little bit of a reputation for the crime. And that's a shame. But hey, uh, maybe it'll get better with time. Also, the economy isn't really that great. I mean, for being a large city, almost 700,000 people living in the metro area of Tucson, the the economic uh, forecast or the the economy for jobs is really lacking. So um, j just to put this into perspective, the household average income for Tucson is about 37,000. The, the national average is 53,000. So the, the good paying jobs are not in Tucson, but going back to the positives, it is affordable housing. And we'll touch on that right here, right now. So in terms of cost of living, Tucson is going to be a lot more affordable than its uh, in-state sister, brother, whatever you want to call it, Phoenix. So I'll just put this into perspective. The average median home cost in Tucson, $185,000. That's why a lot of retirees go there. Retirees go there. They don't want to bring jobs. They don't want to bring people in. They want to keep it sleepy. But Phoenix, $239,000 is the average median household income. And I would even challenge that because if you go around Phoenix Metro, I mean, you'll be lucky if you could get a house in, you can't even get a house in, in Gilbert or Chandler, or even, yeah, Gilbert or Chandler, you can't find a house for 239,000. I mean, the starting price in Gilbert and Chandler is around about 310. Yeah, 300 to 320. Sure, maybe a little bit less if you get a smaller house, but um, Phoenix, <laughs> the actual Metro area of Phoenix, is why 239,000 that we're talking, you know, inner, inner city, but uh, the utilities are cheaper in Tucson than Phoenix. The transportation overall is cheaper because you don't have to travel such long, large distances like you do in this urban sprawl area of uh, Phoenix. But overall, just gen generally overall, Tucson is cheaper than Phoenix, but the jobs are in Phoenix, not so much in Tucson right now. The big industry in Tucson is aerospace. Uh, they got, uh, I think they have Raytheon, you know, the uh, aerospace because of the Air Force and whatnot. So if you're into the military, that's a good thing. Tara Moody. Oh, thank you to the 14 people who crushed up the likes. So we're moving up the ladder here on the likes. We've got lots of comments. Tara Moody says, I love Tucson. I moved here from Michigan one year ago. It's much more beautiful than Phoenix. South Tucson is bad, but Oro Valley and the foothills are beautiful. There's one thing that's... I agree with all that. The foothills of Oro Valley are amazing. <laughs> the Catalina foothills, amazing. If you guys haven't seen my video that I posted on our Facebook page, actually, let me post the video uh, from our Facebook page of Tucson. Uh, it got a lot of views, actually. Like it went, it kind of went borderline viral in Tucson. It got about uh, 70, let's see, it was at around 70,000 views. And I was looking at who was sharing it. 1.6 thousand people shared it, and most of them are from Tucson. So, uh, you know, why would someone not living in Tucson share the video? But there's the video that we did, and it puts into perspective just how beautiful the foothills of, uh, you know, Catalina Mountains are. If you check check on that link, you can also like the page if you want to keep up with some of the videos I'm going to make. I'm going to make a real banger about Phoenix, though. I made one about Scottsdale that's pretty good. You can see all some of the videos. They're mostly with my drone. Um, but yeah, so, all right. So Tara Moody to me, Phoenix is sprawl. Zeus, the truth. Okay. He said, Tucson is a S H I T hole. When I was in Tucson, okay. Here just last month, I did go into the Catalina foothills, all up and down the Catalina foothills and Oro Valley. And my friend Robert that was with me, 
He was like, dude, you should build a house in here. This is a really nice place. I said, yeah, this is a place you build a house in the Catalina foothills. If you're a homebody, I mean, you're going to love life if you're a homebody and you're in the Catalina foothills. But one caveat, you've got to appreciate desert as a beautiful thing. If you don't appreciate the desert as a beautiful thing, I do appreciate the desert as a beautiful thing. I think of it as a forest all in of itself. But people who come from Maine or the redwoods of California or some rainforest up in the north, they don't look at the desert in the same way that us people who have experienced the desert look at it. So it's a, it is a desert forest, literally. It's a beautiful place in the Catalina foothills. Um, they're the only places around Phoenix that even are on that level of being that much of a beautiful high desert, you would have to go way north into Cave Creek and then go towards like Desert Mountain and Tonto, Tonto Hills. So there are places in North Phoenix that are beautiful like Tucson, but big, 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 big money. Desert Mountain, if you, if you got the big money and you want to play ball with the big boys, uh, go look at this place called Desert Mountain in North Phoenix. Uh, and then go right next door to it is Tonto Hills. But that's the thing. That's only up there in North Phoenix in that one little area, and it's really expensive. In Tucson, you get that all the way around the whole Catalina Mountains, a, a lot larger mountain. So that's that beautiful Sonoran Desert Forest, uh, Sonoran Forest. I mean, they might as well just call it the forest because it's a desert forest. In fact, in Cave Creek, they have a golf course called Desert Forest. Okay, so Mount Lemon and Casa Verde is pretty nice, though. Yeah, it is. They also have another place outside Oral Valley called Dove Mountain, which people uh, consider to be pretty nice. And then um, Terra Moody, Mount Lemon is cooler and has pine trees and snow. Yes, that's another thing that's a really good point. So today, here it is, it's raining. It's today in Phoenix, it's been raining all day. Not all day, it started at three o'clock and it's been raining all night. Like it's kind of cold right now. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are actually in Arizona right now, but it's been, there's a cold front in town. We got some rain here. But uh, when th this kind of weather rolls in, you go up on Mount Lemon in Tucson, literally 20 to 30 minute drive right up Mount Lemon, you're in the snow and you're in the pines. Uh, you just meander all up there and you've got black bears, you've got uh, bobcats, cougar, you know, cougars, uh, whatever you like. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a forest, like she said. Um, so that's pretty good. Tara says Tucson is surrounded by rugged mountains. Yeah, they have. Quite a few mountain ranges surrounding Tucson. You have Mica Mountain, uh, where the Saguaro National Park is. You have Rincon. Rincon's another area you, you would want to check out. They've got some pretty cool caves uh, around Rincon. And then if you wanted to go even further towards where David lives, down there by Sierra Vista, you know, there's some stuff around there. You got Coronado National Forest. And then you have Saguaro National Park West near Tucson Mount uh, Park, which is where the Sonoran Desert Museum is. So if you go, if you want to see what the, just how special the Arizona Sonoran Desert is, you can go to the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum, which I consider to be a pro because that is one of my favorite museums in all of Arizona. And it has been for a while. And I don't think you can go, if you go to Tucson, you absolutely have to check out the Sonoran Desert Museum because that's going to give you the, inf in fact, I would say make that one of your very first things you're going to do when you go to Tucson. It is a little bit of a touristy thing, but at the same time, it's going to help frame your interpretation of what you're about to discover when you go to Tucson. Uh, West Tucson is growing. Um, you know, they have uh, some areas around there. It's, it's just not as, it's not as high up there. It's not as sought after as the Catalina foothills. So let's see, we got some more comments. 21 people crushed up the likes, 60 people watching now. So David Walker says, or David Walker says, I love the Sonoran Desert Museum. Tara Moody, I love it too. So you have people from Tucson tell, say, agreeing here that the, the Sonoran Desert Museum is special. It's a place worth checking out. West Coast, what do you think about Tucson real estate? Well, Tucson real estate, I mean, if I was to retire anywhere in Arizona, I would be, I would have to really consider real estate in the Catalina foothills. The only thing that I'd worry about is like, it's going to, it's so, it's such a beautiful place. People from California, they got big money and, you know, it's buying a $500,000 or $600,000 house in a place like Tanca Verde or Sabino Canyon 
or the Catalina Foothills area, Oro Valley isn't a, isn't that much to them, but to the average person, five hundred to six hundred thousand is a pretty penny. Uh, but you know, because it's becoming such a high demand area, I'd be concerned that the the serenity and the and the acreage of the homes out there would go away because that's one of the good things about it is you get acreage out there. Uh, you know, so I hate to give it away like that, but I'd have to say it is, it is pretty nice. I mean, it's not for everyone because not everyone can afford to build up there, but it, it is kind of like the Malibu or the Santa Barbara of, uh, Phoenix or I mean of, uh, Arizona. And then, you know, you have those hikes, the seven falls hike, you have the Sycamore, uh, reservoir, the Hutch's pool, just some things to explore around there. You have Mount Kimball, uh, Mount Lemon, the Santa Catalina natural area. So Willow Canyon, Whitetail, all the good stuff out there. But if, if you can't afford that, go check out down, down uh, southeast uh, towards the Saguaro National Park Estate. Okay. So let's see what everyone's saying. It took forever for us to buy. All the houses had 20 offers first day. Wow. Really? Mr. Cyclone says, I love Tanca Verde. Okay, how's Tucson property tax compared to Maricopa County? So Tucson is in Pima County. Arizona, Phoenix is in Maricopa County. I'd have to look into that. So property tax in property tax in Pima versus Pinal County or uh, Maricopa. Uh, in between there is going to be the Pinal County. Um, so Maricopa County's per capita primary net asset. As, assessed value is 17% higher than Pima County. So it looks like Maricopa County has 17% uh, higher uh, taxes according to the Pima.gov. So this is according to Pima County's website. They're saying that the, the property tax, so this means Pima County has to levy an additional 59 cents per dollar of taxable net assessed value in order to collect the same amount of revenue per capita. So if I'm reading that correctly, um, Maricopa County, which is where Phoenix is, has higher property tax. So for those of you who are like, I'm, I don't want to pay my, I don't want to pay a lot in property tax. I mean, you know, so you have, you're going to have a cheaper mortgage and less property tax in Tucson, but you're going to have way less things to do. There's not a, there's not a, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot to do. There's not pro sports teams and they don't get too many concerts. I mean, out here in Phoenix, we get, we're getting a uh, country thunder here coming up. That's the big shebang. I mean, if, if, uh, and it's funny because in our, in our group living in Arizona on Facebook, I don't know if you guys are, are in there, but I shared a link to country thunder and no one in our group was really aware of it. Like, but the local, if you look at the local news stations, Fox 10, 12 news, ABC 15, the, you know, it got thousands of likes. So I was like, oh, well, I'll share this with our audience. It only got like five likes. Point is, is that people coming at, coming out here, they don't realize how big of a deal um, Country Thunder is out here in Arizona. But I'll tell you right now, and I think that's partly because I haven't said anything about Country Thunder. But Country Thunder, it's in a couple states. It's kind of like Coachella. It's, it's not quite as big as Coachella or um, what they have up in uh, Nevada. What's it called? Um, Burning Man. It's not quite on that level, but... Country Thunder, they, they're getting some big stars, and uh, it, it's in Florence. So it's kind of in between Tucson and Phoenix, really. But people, they go out there, they camp and all that. But Country Thunder is a big deal. So if you haven't heard of Country Thunder, now you have. But um, Andy Poncia says, Country Thunder is off awesome. Tara Moody says, we have to go to theater. Has anyone been to Fantisti? Fanti <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that one. Uh Nelson Hall says country thunder is huge. Zeus, the truth thoughts on bad traffic in between Phoenix and Tucson. Yeah, I have some thoughts on that. Thanks Zeus for the uh, $2 uh, super chat, by the way. So there's a couple ways to get into uh, Tucson from uh, Phoenix. And the main corridor is going to be the I-10 and the I-10 uh, is, it's basically four lanes. Okay. It's two lanes on each side. Uh, so it's, it's got, it's got a nice center divider, which is safe. But the thing is, the thing that I always, uh, kind of heard other people complaining about too, not just myself, you'll be on that road and there's semis, 18 wheeler semis going 90 miles an hour sometimes. 
I don't I don't know how that's possible. So maybe they're not going 90, but they're going 80. I mean, we're talking about you'll be going 75. You're in this lane, and here comes this thundering, just 18 wheeler. And then right behind it is another 18 wheeler trying to pass you, followed by another 18 wheeler. And honestly, going 75 with a with a 18 wheeler passing you, I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm serious about that. Like 18 wheelers when they're passing you on the freeway. I'm always like, get away from that 18 wheeler, like either speed up or slow down. Cause let that sucker, you don't want to be driving them side by side with an 18 wheeler with the margin of error of three feet. Okay. So that's, you want to ask me about traffic. That's the first thing I'm going to say is too many 18 wheelers on the road on I-10. Now, if you go to some of these other roads, okay. Again, another reason why I want this damn freeway to be built or this damn high speed rail to be built. You have Highway 79, okay, Penal uh, Pioneer Parkway. That'll take you kind of roundabout way where you come in through um, Oracle. For those of you who don't know what the Biosphere 2 is, the Biosphere is this uh, this project that's supposed to simulate living on Mars. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, it's a, you ever seen that movie Biodome with Pauly Shore? That's the Biosphere. Anyway, um, that's out there by Oracle, uh, Oracle Junction you know, off of, you you take Highway 79 to 77, you go to Biosphere, right? Well, anyway, you take 79, it turns into 77, and you finally arrive in Catalina. But if you took 79 all the way from, it, it, basically, you're, you're looking at Florence to Oracle Junction. And in between there, it's a, it's a one-lane free, one-lane highway. So you got one line, one lane going north, one lane going south, and you got cars going sometimes 120 miles an hour uh, in each direction. And, you know, it's you don't and you have to question, like, <laughs> are they texting while they're going 120? Are they drunk while they're going 120? Now, they're not going 120 the whole way. It's just some of these cars will be booking it <laughs> and they'll be bobbing all over the road. As you see them coming up, you're like, whoa, man, slow down, slow down. Uh, Mark Johnson says high speed rail is needed. Yeah, it is because uh, either, you know, I mean, that and probably another freeway or widening the I-10, which I think is in the, in the books. I think they're planning on it. So Zeus, Zeus the Truth says the semis love to haul butt through the desert. Yeah, they do. They're, the semis, you know, you just get out into this wide open desert and you're just a semi. And you're just like, I got to get from Los Angeles uh, Harbor or Long Beach Harbor all the way to uh, Austin, Texas with this load in about 16 hours. I don't got time to slow down. I'm going to go, you know, and they, they get into Arizona and they just start ripping it. And in between Phoenix and Tucson is a perfect place for them to just rip it wide open. They really do. Um, Nelson Hall, it's all about the money. If Arizona takes federal funds for rail, it will take twice as long. Yeah, I mean, how are we going to pay for it? It's, it's, it's a conversation that's got to be had. But the only thing is, is that, we got to get these oil lobbyists out of the way. I, I'm not against fossil fuels. I'm not against that. But, you know, <laughs> come on, man. Like your fossil fuel profits and all that are, are hunky dory and everything. But we've got to get some additional uh, transportation methods because China is already kicking our butt with it. I mean, it's, it's and it's safer. We need the safety. And there's no there's no reason not to. Uh, Tara Moody says biosphere is interesting. Nelson Hall, I work in rail in Tucson and am pushing for high-speed rail between Tucson and Phoenix. Vote Steve Farley. Oh, so Steve Farley. I'm going to have to look into Steve Farley. Thanks for that one, uh, Nelson Hall. You should have him contact this channel so we can uh, interview him or something. I don't know. David Welker says, a short-term railroad in Arizona should be doing passenger service from Phoenix to Tucson until a high-speed rail network can be built. Uh, would be a good idea. Okay, so about the railroad, why does Amtrak – stop in Maricopa, but not come into Phoenix. So you guys know that, right? So if you take an Amtrak, like for example, I could ride Amtrak from San Antonio to Tucson, but I can't take, there's no such thing as a route from San Antonio to Phoenix. I forgot the name of it. It's called like the Great Westerner route or something like that. But the closest you can get to Phoenix is Maricopa, which is, it's close. I mean, but it's not that close. Now, the reason is, is because BNSF or the, the, that Amtrak could not find it profitable 
to um, use the lines that the cargo, because there is a railroad that goes through here. In fact, it goes right through Queen Creek and Santan Valley. If you ever go down Rittenhouse, you'll see that railroad. So there is a rail, but Amtrak doesn't take it. Just uh, cargo trains. And the reason is, is because they can't afford to uh, use the line. And, and you know, Amtrak all in of itself is, I don't even think Amtrak ever is profitable. It lives off of federal funding. The only place it's profitable is in the Northeast. New York, Boston, Philly, Washington, people ride trains out there in, in back east. You guys know that, right? Um, and, and, and so Amtrak is profitable over there. In fact, you get on, the, uh, I think it's A-C-E-A-L-A, -A -A, a, a, a Cella line or something like that. It's like the, the fastest train in America. But when you ride those trains, they're always booked. Like every train in the Northeastern Corridor is, is full to the brim. Like, in fact, Amtrak could probably add cars, carts, rail cars to that and still uh, be fully booked. Uh, but out here in the Southeast, when, once they get outside of the North, Northeast, Amtrak's not profitable. And the reason is, is because it's so spread out. Whereas like Philadelphia to, to DC, to Baltimore, and then to New York and to um, Boston and Providence. And, uh, you know, I guess maybe they don't go too much further than, um, Boston, but they do to Maine and New Hampshire. But out here in the in the West Coast, it's all spread out. I mean, <laughs> Phoenix and Tucson are two metropolises, and then you got Las Vegas in that same amount of Vegas, Tucson, uh, Phoenix, Albuquerque. You've already you would have like the whole Pacific. You'd have a population of like a hundred million people almost in the Northeast. So that's why it's not like that. But here's the here's the thing. That's why you got to make it high speed, high speed rail. People aren't going to go 55 miles an hour from San Antonio to Tucson because it's going to take 18 hours. But you make San Antonio to Tucson on a high speed rail pass and it only takes three hours or something like that. Yeah, people will ride that. They'll find that to be more efficient than the uh, airplane because who wants to sit and go through TSA when you can just get on a train? You got to make it comfortable and fast, easy. Follow China. If, 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 if America doesn't want to be the innovator, just follow China. What did China do? Do that. Because they obviously are uh, doing pretty good. Same with Europe. All right. Michael Adrian, former New Yorker here. Trains and buses all over the place in New York City. Yes. And they have a, they, so they have the, the fast rail and then they have the mid, uh, uh, the subway, which is a medium rail uh, speed. David Welker, trains are better than planes. Yeah, especially with, I mean, you have to have a train or you have to have a plane to get to Tokyo. I mean, airplanes are still going to be a, a necessity. It's just that for short range travel, like Phoenix to Tucson or Phoenix to Prescott or Phoenix to Vegas or Phoenix to LA or Phoenix to San Diego, I don't know that hopping on an airplane is necessarily needed, uh, especially if there's, if there's a rail solution that gets me there in a half hour or no, it wouldn't take a half hour. It'd probably take an hour, right? I mean, taking an airplane from Phoenix to Las Vegas takes about 45, no, to Los, Los Angeles. Phoenix to LA on a plane takes about 60 minutes from gate to gate. So we'll see. All right, Tara Moody, Rick, Oral Valley or Catalina Foothills? What did Rick say? What is the safe place in Tucson area? And Tara Moody, she answered that and she said, uh, Oral Valley or Catalina Foothills. So there you go. Zeus the truth. I used to work a dippy little farm in between 77 and I-10. There's absolutely nothing out there, just pure desert. Yeah, I, I assume you're talking, um, you're talking about Catalina. Let me see here. I know the area you're talking about. You're talking about around Oracle, right? And then in between Oracle, there's going to be uh, Marana, right? So you're talking about Marana or somewhere in that area. That That's the place that always stands out to me kind of in that area is Picacho State Park. So uh, the, the, the famous landmark that everyone knows about if you're ever in the area of uh, Tucson to Phoenix, if you make that drive, be on the lookout for a place called P Picacho Peak. Uh, in the summertime, Picacho Peak looks like hell. In the winter, it looks kind of beautiful because it's green. But Picacho Peak is the big uh, is the big thing that you. It's kind of like in between. It's like the it's like the halfway marker in between Tucson and Phoenix. But the area he's talking about is around like Picacho Peak. But if you go towards uh, east, 
So if you go east from Picacho, it's just desert there. I think they have like a road, like a dirt road that connects it. Uh, uh, here it is, East Link Drive. So anyways, Zeus the truth. Um, Americans need to build cities like Europeans. Well, cities in Europe are really old, like Florence, Rome, London. I mean, I would say I would say the model to follow is these 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 Asian cities. These Asian cities are the ones that are paving the way. In fact, having been to Asia, <clears throat> the Aussies do it better than America right now. Aussies are building smarter cities than the United States. Perth, Perth is probably a more amazing city than any American city in terms of intelligent uh, layout and design. Uh, but the smartest cities I've been to in terms of efficiency, Hong Kong, uh, Shenzhen, Shenzhen is growing out. I mean, Shenzhen, China is right next to Hong Kong. It's so, it, 15 to 20 years ago, Shenzhen was not much. It was a fishing village. Nowadays you go there, they've got railroads galore. They've got mega stations that can connect you from Shenzhen in the South of China, all the way to um, Shanghai in the North. Now, <laughs> Uh, I mean, to Beijing on, on like high speed corridors, like you're, you're booking it, getting to Shen, Shanghai from Shenzhen. And if you look at a map, it's pretty far away. They can even get you on a high speed rail to Tibet. So here in America, you can't even take a high speed rail anywhere. The Chinese can get you from Shanghai to Tibet on a high speed rail. They can get you from uh, Hong Kong to Shanghai and in the United States still you know, wants to hold on to this title of being the great innovator. Well, I'm sorry, if you don't have a high speed rail solution as an alternative transportation method to automobiles, there's nothing really too innovative about that. That just says you're a one trick pony. Pony, You like cars. <laughs> you know, that's what that tells me. Oh, Macau. Yeah, Macau. They don't have a high speed rail to Macau. What you do is you take a high speed ferry <laughs> and then you get off into Macau and you go into this beautiful brand new ferry terminal i mean it's it's huge in fact it's bigger than an airport a lot of airports how that's how big the macau ferry terminal is uh, but that area you're talking about is called the pearl river valley the pearl river valley has a population of about 67 million people 70 million people and it includes guangzhou shenzhen hong kong and macau and then chengdu and a couple other uh chong uh guangdong there's a couple cities in there that's more people than uh, <laughs> the entire Northeast, isn't it? And it's the size of, it's, it's, it's in an area the size of Massachusetts. 67 million people, uh, imagine 67 million people living in Massachusetts. Our biggest state in America is California with 40 million and people call that overpopulated. So just imagine how many people they're packing into that area in the Pearl River Valley. Um. Mr. Cyclone, China also looks like they'll surpass U.S. in blockchain and crypto, too. Well, if the United States doesn't uh, decide to start innovating and t this uh, again, I'm going into my rant. I feel as though uh, our regulators and our we have too much lawsuits going on, too much red tape, too much bureaucracy in the United States. And it's almost like shackles for our economy. And if they really want to unleash this economy, they're going to have to break the shackles off and let us innovate because China's already doing it. In fact, uh, China's doing it. Russia's starting to do it. These, these, other, these other places are starting to realize that you've got to let your people innovate and you've got to give them incentive to innovate. And when that happens, that's how you stay competitive and you create jobs and your economy booms and everyone's not, talk, not talking about uh, how they can't afford things. They're talking about how they can't afford things. And that's just what's going on in China right now is they're innovating and they're outpacing us in everything from 5G to blockchain to, high, to, 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 to transportation. I mean, some of the most impressive uh, architectural uh, projects going on are in China, in Asia, and what's really being built in the United States. I mean, there's a couple skyscrapers being built in, in New York City, uh, I mean, do we have any real cool bridge ideas or anything really innovative or creative that we're working on in the United States? Well, in China, there's a whole bucket list of them. Even in the Middle East, the Middle East is going buck wild with all these projects. And, and you can't get one, you can't even, and, and Trump, he ran on this whole idea that he was the construction guy, we're building a wall. So that's what we got. 
We got Trump to build us a wall, but that's about all we're building in the United States. I mean, remember back in the old days in Arizona, you even had Hoover Dam, Glen Canyon Dam. You had all these impressive projects that were world class. You had the Space Needle. You know, we were a real cutting edge country, uh, you know, around about the 40s and 50s. We were booming. And then uh, the lawyers got involved and then they just started attacking everything, free enterprise. And then when the lawyers got involved, it slowed everything down. Like uh, Robert was saying, he, we were talking about how how just Asia is just booming to the roof and back or to the moon and back. And he was saying in a place like Thailand, one of the things that the king of Thailand, the guy who just passed away, he was the old king. He got rid of um, a lot of the red tape, the lawsuits and lower taxes. So lowering taxes and getting rid of all of this frivolous lawsuit stuff opened up the, the gateways. Another thing to consider, the reason the medical institutions of the United States, when you go to the doctor, you'll notice they just treat you. They don't cure you. So they're treating you, but they're not curing you. Why is that? Because if a doctor really tries to do something that's going to cure you, you could sue them if it's uh, outside the box. So what do people do? They go to Mexico, they go to Colombia, they go to China to get uh, a different form of medication to treat their illness because in the United States, they just, they just take the safe path to uh, medical pr practice because if they don't take the safe path, lawsuits are coming. Now, we've also had, we, there, it is a slippery slope because, you know, if, if, if there wasn't, um, uh, this thing keeping doctors honest, there could be a problem with that. But that's just an example of some things you can see when the lawyers get involved. I mean, what's what, what happens when someone gets in an accident? They want 33% of whatever they're going to get. So they're going to get you a lot of money, but they're going to get 33% of it. And that's what lawyers are just, you know, and that's why they keep driving up your insurance rates because when there's an accident, they're trying to get 200 to $300,000 off them and they're going to get 300 or 33% of that. The, the the person gets the, the rest, but I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's what keeps driving up the insurance cost. Nelson Hall, downtown Tucson has a lot of 5G antennas going up. It should be a smart city center in the near future. Yeah. And you know, there's people who are concerned that 5G is safe or is it not, but we'll, we'll, we're about to find out. David Welker, doctors suck in America, especially since they'll give you pills for no reason. Yeah, they'll give you a pill for everything. And it's it's it, it's just to treat it. It's they're just they're just treating the symptoms. They're not going for the root of the problem. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they're, they're, to go to the root of the problem would be like saying, hey, um, you need to eat healthier. Well, people don't want to eat healthier. So. They'd rather keep eating the salt. They'd rather keep eating the food that got them in this situation, all the sugar and everything. And so the doctors are like, well, we got a pill for that to offset what you're doing on your daily routine. Okay, you don't want to exercise to lower your cholesterol, blah, blah, blah. So we'll give you some cholesterol medicine. Well, if someone got out there and started exercising, their cholesterol would be, or, you know, it's, it's one of those weird things. Fiber optic says Nelson Hall. Fiber optic is a great internet technology. Uh, it is definitely way faster than broadband. That's for dang sure. Fiber optic is uh, it's the future until they bring in something new like 5G, right? Street food in Tucson. David Welker, uh, do you want to say anything on that? Nelson Hall, do you guys want to say anything? Hodgepodge says Amtrak has two bullet, 28 bullet trains coming out in 2021. Are you serious? Amtrak bringing bullet trains? Amtrak bullet trains? What? You're kidding me. That's good news to me. That's good news to hear. None of it's going to be on the West Coast then. Okay, so the Acela Express reaching 150 miles an hour Northeast Regional Keystone Service. Uh, Mark Penn Line Station trains. Three services reaching 125 miles an hour. Where did you hear that uh, they're going to be bringing in high-speed trains to Amtrak? How did it, how did Amtrak go along this long without ever, like, thinking about, or why didn't we not have high-speed trains with Amtrak? You know, most of Amtrak is federally funded, by the way. Um, the thing that is really kind of embarrassing, actually, if I could share, get back into my uh, rail rant, when you pay first class to ride on an Amtrak, right, it might cost you $800, okay? So 
eight hundred dollars to to go from New Orleans to say Houston, or I'm sorry, Los Angeles to Seattle. But the first class experience you're going to get in one of those coaches or one of those cars is really kind of gnarly. It's not very good. <laughs> and you go to China and you're like, whoa, this is true first class. And you're like, why are we why are we calling this first class? This is yeah, this is a this is a stateroom or a room, but it's like dirty. It's kind of musty. I don't know if it's even clean. Uh, it's kind of yeah, it's not very good. And how how did we get? I guess Americans are just so oblivious to the fact that they're getting hosed that they don't even know. <laughs> it's really funny. They don't. The Americans don't even know. They're just like, oh, this is great. We got a nice coat. This is great. This is fantastic. And you're like, no, this is not first class. This, by definition, is like ghetto. <laughs> That's Amtrak for you. But it's federally funded. I mean, it's the only it's the only rail solution we have in this country. It's it's almost like, well, let someone else compete with them. I was super excited to find out that the guy who owns a Virgin, Richard Branson, is building. A, he's part time part of an investor group that's building a railroad solution from Miami to Orlando. And when I heard it was Richard Branson involved, I was like, thank God, because <laughs> it's not Amtrak. Because with him involved, it's going to be better. For example, um, I always, anytime I got a chance, I would fly Virgin. I don't know if you've ever flown Virgin Airlines. They used to have Virgin America. They also used to have, I've flown on Virgin Australia, and then they have Virgin Atlantic. Well, it's one of the best airlines you'll ever fly on. But then uh, Alaska Airlines, Bought. Alaska is one of my favorite um, American carriers, I guess. I mean, it's, it's okay. But um, Alaska bought Virgin and immediately it started sucking. So they were still flying around in Virgin planes, but uh, Alaska was the ones running it. So I was like, oh gosh, why? But they forced Branson out of it. But Branson's like the kind of guy we need uh, him and his his management team are the people that we need kind of that that forward thinking, that creativity, that that genius, that brilliance, helping us with our rail system. So to hear that he's involved in the track from Miami to Orlando was exciting. I'd get really excited if he was to do help us with the one from Phoenix to Tucson. Hey, come on out. Well, you know, because he'll he'll bring he'll bring he'll bring some quality. It's about the quality. It, it, that's the thing that's really lacking in American society these days is, you know, it's like the food. Out here in Queen Creek, for example, uh, if you say health food, you're looked at as a nut. What, what, what do you need health food for? You got Burger King, you got Taco Bell, and you got Jack in the Box and KFC. Uh, well, um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be fat and obese, okay? So uh, can we get some? Because uh, I, I, I notice if I don't eat right, I, I, I put on I put on weight, and I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be bogged down, so I like healthy food. But America's like, you got KFC, you got Taco Bell, you got Mickey D's right down the road. And you're like, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Nothing against being fat or anything. I mean, I, mean, I seriously, being, being big people are some of the funnest, friendliest, nicest people. But I'm saying that I want to have energy. And that food doesn't give me energy to be enthusiastic about you know, it gives me fatigue. If anything, I get food comatose from eating that junk food that they're they, that that's around me. And I'm not a farmer, although I do grow some food in my backyard. But that's not enough sustenance to supply me. I'd literally have to be a farmer. You know, the farmer and the Dell. What's my dog doing? <laughs> He's stretching. Okay, but um, yeah. So anyway, 38 people crushed up the likes. That's pretty good. We got 64 people going, and. David Welker, Union Pacific has used the passenger service. They are regional passenger rail services here in America. New Mexico has one. Arizona should do that with one of their short, our short lines. Yeah, I think they have. Yeah, so I did actually ride a non-Amtrak rail from Albuquerque to um, Santa Fe. It was so slow, though. I mean, but I was grateful. I was grateful that there was a train. But uh, it was super slow. It was good, though. It was good. So, yeah, that's a non-Amtrak. They do have a non-Amtrak train in Arizona. It's in the Grand Canyon. You can ride a railroad in Grand Canyon. I don't know if you guys know that. 
Just Mike. He says, you call it junk food, I call it delicious. Now, hey, yeah, I mean, I like going to ta Taco Bell and everything, and it's like a dessert. I don't want Taco Bell or McDonald's every day, if that's my only options. So I like uh, I like to be able to, you know, get some healthy food, like maybe a Sprouts or something like that. But it's funny because people are like, why? Why? Why do you want health food out here? Go go explain that one. <laughs> uh, Zeus the truth. Junk food is worse than crack. People who feed it to their kids are crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a whole nother subject in and of itself. And yeah. Google user. Does Tucson share this mentality regarding health? The non-health mentality, I mean. Um, it's not even all over Phoenix. Like Scottsdale is very health conscious. Scottsdale is uh, one of those places, it's a, it's a foodie, gastronomy kind of area. You can get all types of wide variety of good food, but it's where the big the, the big money is. But they put where, where the average people live, they, they just kind of give them the, these fast food solutions. They're like, okay, you want this, this, this one, or this one, all fast food. And like the epitome of a, uh, a healthy uh, fast food restaurant in Santan Valley or Queen Creek is Subway. <laughs> like, hey, well, they built a Subway. Okay, I'm talking about like a place where I can get a salad, you know, go make, you know, you, even if you go to the fries, for example, the fries, uh, the quality of the food in the fries is not where you, you could tell it's not healthy food, even though it's healthy food. Does that make sense? Now you walk into a, you walk into a Whole Foods, you walk into a Sprouts, a Trader Joe's, that's healthy food. That's healthy food. But as far as does Tucson have that? Uh, yeah, I saw some pretty healthy. I saw some health food solutions around Tucson, but in the inner city areas, no. It's fast food galore too. Uh, yeah, Subway doesn't have a five dollar foot long anymore. Just Mike, no worries. My wife shops at Sprouts and Trader Joe's and makes me eat it. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, man. I hear you. I hear you. Um, Mr. Roy Elroy. Hey, Jeff, hoping to move to Tucson. Thank you so much for the videos. Oh, you're welcome. Zeus the Truth says, French fries are not healthy on their own. They've they've corrupted them and laced them with fake oils and bleached salt. Okay, I don't know about that. Uh, Mark Johnson, we have Sprouts, Trader Joe's, and Whole Foods here. There you go. As well as some vegan spots. Andy says, we have three whole paycheck stores here, Whole Foods. There you go. <laughs> three whole. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I call it. I'm actually waiting on, uh, supposedly, uh, Amazon is bringing the, you know, Amazon bought Whole Foods. And Amazon being like a Walmart, but online, right? Like the stuff you buy on Amazon is no different than the stuff you buy at Walmart. The only difference is you're just sitting at home pushing buttons. I mean, a lot of the stuff I get at Amazon is like, that did not look like what I, the pictures, right? Whereas at least at Walmart, you can like look at it and be like, oh, that's, that's, that's a piece of junk. On Amazon, you think you're going to get like this Gucci, Gucci thing, you know, this really nice designer looking deal and shows up and it's like half the size. Um, but they bought Whole Foods. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because we'll find out, right? Uh, Tucson is going to get Amazon Fresh service. Let's look at Amazon Fresh. Amazon Fresh in Arizona. And we'll see what comes up for that. So Amazon Fresh, the retail giant grocery delivery service, is now available in Phoenix. Customers who subscribe to Prime Service now can add Amazon Fresh to their subscription. Amazon Fresh offers thousands of products from meat and seafood to fresh produce, everyday essentials within two hours. This was published on August 24th, 2019. So Amazon Fresh is now coming in. It says, with the launch of Amazon Fresh. So August 22nd, 2019, the cities that are included in this are um, Las Vegas, Atlanta, Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Denver, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, Philadelphia, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. We're thrilled to introduce Amazon Fresh to Prime members 
in Houston, Minneapolis, and Phoenix. I don't see Tucson on this list. This is off of TechCrunch as of October or August 22nd, 2019. So the answer to Amazon Fresh being in Tucson is probably a hard no. Um, Phoenix only has three Whole Foods. I mean, are you, is that a joke or are you serious? I didn't know we only have three Whole Foods in Arizona, in Phoenix. I, I mean, I've seen a Whole Foods quite often. How many? <laughs> I think he's teasing. How many Whole Food in in Arizona? Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of Whole Foods in Phoenix. So you were obviously joking. Um, yeah, all of there's lots of Whole Foods all over Phoenix, the whole metro area. You almost got me on that one, though. Just Mike, it ain't cheaper after Amazon purchased it. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's expensive. Um, David Welker, I'm sure Tucson will eventually get Amazon fresh. There are a couple not Amazon facilities now. And they have Whole Foods. Okay, so that's good. Um, anyways, guys, good discussion. Again, we just uh, if you if you're showing up late, the beginning of the video is where we talked about the pros and cons of Tucson. Overall, it's a great place to chill out. If you're a very relaxed human being and you like relaxing, go to Tucson. If you if you're an, a vibrant socialite, uh, move to um, move to Tucson. And I got a. Um, <laughs> I got a super chat. I'm going to answer it, but I'm not going to say your name because, <laughs> you know, come on now, man. Thoughts on Los Angeles to, to Phoenix Marathon being held in summertime. Uh, crazy. Absolutely crazy. That would be the craziest idea I've ever heard. Where did you hear this? Where did you hear this? Phoenix to L.A. Marathon. <laughs> that's, that's such a funny name. Did you guys see this super chat that just came up? I think he's I think he's trolling. <laughs> he almost got me saying the name, I, you know, because I always say, um, okay, Nelson Hall. He says LOL. Just Mike says LMAO. <laughs> this guy almost got me, man. Anyways, um, what's up, third pro pro power prod? Yeah, we're, we're about to jam out, but um, we got 48 up likes, 58 people still watching. We had a long discussion. We're going to do these more, but uh, my dog's getting restless and he's going to fight or he's like bullying my cat or something. We'll, we'll see what's going on. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> all right, man. I, I see. All right. All right. Thanks for the pass. See y'all later. Larry. Take it easy, man. <laughs>